Yeah, first, of all, first of all, I would like to thank the organization. It's really nice to be able to present our work. And of course, it's really nice to meet each other again and uh, discuss the results uh, afterwards. Um, with our company, Morphotonics, we develop different tools. So we are not working on wafer scale. We develop large area roll to plate nano imprint uh, tools. And if we say large area, it is really large area. So we make uh, nano or micron imprints at areas of above one square meter. And we believe that this precise but large area uh, imprint technology is the path forward for high volume uh, AR manufacturing. And in order to demonstrate this, we grouped with for other pioneering uh, companies, and we made a demonstration. Uh, and in this uh, presentation, we will show the results. And to start with the conclusion, yeah, it, uh, it's possible, it's available. So what you see here is we started with a, a master having one eyepiece. We scaled it up to 30, uh, six by five, and we add four of these upscaled masters at one flex stamp and we replicate it on four squared wafers of each 300 by 300 millimeter. And this is only at Gen 3 and a half size. At Morphotonics we work also on Gen 5 size and then you can add nine of these areas. Of course, with the consortium we looked at the quality and we will discuss. But first I would like to tell a little bit more about Morphotonics. So Morphotonics is a Dutch OEM where we develop and sell tools, bolt plate imprint tools, and the technology is proven. We sold more than 10 tools worldwide, globally, and some of them are used in production, in mass production. So there are commercial products in the market which, uh, which have optical components made on our tool. And these optical components are made with a yield of above 95%. We do not only develop the tools, we work together, we closely work together with the customer. Um, we are not a mastering company, but having the master we, with the customer, we scale up the master, we make the stamp, we look at the uh, characteristics which are needed, we develop the resins, we have our own de resin development lab, and yeah, with this all together, with our own imprint tools in our lab, we really can make all complex uh, replications. So how does it work? Um, once having the master, we make an, a flex stamp, an inverse copy of the master, and we ensure that the flex stamp has a good anti-stick properties. So we coat the resin on the substrate, we press the flex stamp in the resin by use of a roller, therefore it's rolled to plate. We cure the resin and we immediately delaminate the flex stamp again. And the flex stamp can be immediately reused. So we always state we have a reusability of the flex stamp of above 500 times, but in production it's even proven to be higher, close to 1,000 times. Um, we can replicate all textures, 500 nanometer, uh, sorry, 50 nanometer up to 500 micron, and we can use different uh, materials. Have, we can replicate on foils or on glass or any material. It's a fast imprint uh, method. You can think of cycle times of few minutes. And having this large area opportunity, uh, we, we think that the scalability is uh, is crucial for high volume uh, uh, AR manufacturing. So the scalability enables to step aside from the standard semicon uh, production method and incorporate a display logic. There's no need in the downstream or upstream processes to, scale, to, st to stay at round wafers. Um, you can put multiple wafers together at, at, at the carrier and imprint in one imprint cycle. Um, these uh, smaller wafers can be round, but you can also make them squared. Um, and then in due time, the, the glass, the hierarchic 
index class, which is not available currently at Gen 5 size, might or will be uh, available. And then you have a comparable uh, quality, but then at lower cost. This will also mean that there are differences. Uh, the, the, the process is different in, in the upscaling, in the materials, uh, in, and also in the waste handling even. We don't use uh, uh, resins with solvents, we use solvent-free resins, which are not spin-coated, but dispensed. So how would it look like? You start with one master, uh, the master you scale up to say 30 up, can be, it can differ, uh, you can go larger, and having the upscaled master, you can make a replica on a squared or a round wafer. Yeah? But the nice thing, having the, the large area capability, you can put more of these scaled, uh, scaled up masters at one flex time, you can imprint in one imprint cycle for substrates. And together we, we discussed this with Shot, and uh, the, the way the, the high refractive index class is made, it's, it's already squared. And there's no need to stay at, at round wafers. So together with Shot, we decided to make squared imprints of 300 by 300 millimeter. And we put four of them together, but over time, this can be enlarged maybe to Gen 5 size in coming years. So we wanted to demonstrate this across the full value chain. So we are asked for other companies to, to join, each showing their own capabilities. And within only six months, we worked on the different steps, from design to mastering, material selection, imprinting, and yeah, quality control. So we asked the company Lightrans to make a waveguide design. They have their own complex software, uh, rigorous coupled wave analysis, uh, which go beyond ray tracing. And uh, well, they de designed uh, the waveguide, but we decided just to make a, a basic waveguide concept. Um, meaning you have the in coupler, uh, the expander, and the out coupler for one color. Uh, we just wanted to show feasibility. And this is how it looks like. For the mastering, we work together with NIL Technologies. They, can, uh, they have an uh, uh, electrical, electron beam uh, lithography tool. They can replicate, or they can master uh, binary grating, base gratings. They can also uh, replicate slanted gratings. Well, they decided to stick with binary and blazed. Um, and as designed by Lightrans, there was a variation in track pitch as well as, as in height. For the materials, we worked together with SHOT. SHOT provided uh, squared wafers. It's uh, an expansion on their real view uh, uh, wafers. And we decided to, to use a, a wafer thickness of uh, 0 0.5 uh, micron, uh, which is, uh, sorry, it's five, yeah, it's 500 micron, uh, which is not uh, uh, the most easy, but it's um, uh, for the waveguide but it worked nicely. Uh, the uh, size is 300 by 290 millimeter. Uh, yeah, with the uh, glass thickness of 0.5 millimeter. For the resin, well, we already worked uh, uh, together with Pixelligent on the development of uh, high refractive index uh, resins. But as discussed, we use solvent-free resin. So with Pixelligent, we uh, developed a, a 1.9 resin solvent-free with a viscosity of uh, 575 uh, uh, millipasseconds, and this resin has a very low haze. Um, for the imprinting, we used the, the Morphotonics tool, we used the Portis 1100, uh, and uh, we used also our own uh, upscaling process as also our own flex stamp uh, process. And the quality was checked by Opto Fidelity. Uh, we wanted uh, another company to check what the quality is. They have, they, they uh, design all kinds of inspection tools, also for augmented reality. They have really nice tools. Uh, and we, our focus was on the contrast as well as the track pitch uniformity. 
So this is how it looks like. So you start with the, the master, uh, we made the upscaling, we made the imprint, and then the four up. Um, and if you do the calculations, then you can end up with uh, 28 million uh, eyepieces made on the Portis 1100, uh, Gen 5 size, up to 95 million uh, made at our fully integrated and automated Aurora uh, line. And this sounds as really a lot of eyepieces, but if you imagine, or if you uh, uh, see that the uh, glasses, typically you use uh, two eyepieces per glass, and then you need another two for the different colors, you, so you already need four eyepieces, then these are only around 20 to 25 million products. So from the master, we went to the upscaled submaster, and then we made the four up uh, on the Gen 3.5 uh, imprint. And there is no limit, so you can go to the Gen uh, uh, 5, and then you might make 270 uh, eyepieces every two minutes. Um, for this imprint, we used our own high, di high dimensional stable stamp, uh, because you want to ensure uh, uh, track pitch stability. Uh, we used the uh, high refractive index resin on the high refractive index wafer. Um, yeah, therefore all the ingredients are there. First, before I go to the quality, I have an example uh, with me. And this is how it will look like, how it does look like. And you can see the colors nicely. And you can also, afterwards, you can have a look at it. So regarding the, the quality, first we look at the replication fidelity. Uh, we use the SEM. Uh, the ink coupler was designed to have a height of 185 nanometer, uh, uh, sorry, 203 nanometer, where we ended up with a height of 185 nanometers. And this is uh, uh, 18 nanometers off, but please know that there was no optimization run. So within six months, without any uh, uh, feedback loops, we uh, already came this close in the first imprint runs. The angle of the blaze grading was uh, uh, steeper, uh, at 22 degrees versus uh, 29 degrees, and the height expander had uh, almost exact height as designed. Uh, for the others, it is you cannot compare uh, the uh, uh, design from the measurement because there is a varying uh, track pitch as well as a varying height, but it shows that the uh, binary grading is well replicated. If you go to the uh, uh, track pitch and, uh, or the grading uh, period, uh, you see that in the first run already that the pitch variation is, is small. Um, so for the binary grading, we only have a 10 picometer uh, deviation in both steps, eh? so in the mastering as well as in the imprint step. Uh, for the outcoupler binary grading, the error is 20 picometer, uh, and that's both for the master as well as for the imprint. Um, and then you also see uh, the, uh, we did two measurements, uh, on the two outer corners uh, of the large area or of the 300 by 300 meter uh, plate. And then you see that over this 300 by 300 millimeter, the deviation is really small. The next topic is on layer thickness variation. Layer thickness variation is defined by the process settings as well as the imprint resin. Uh, we have an residual layer thickness of 5.8 micron um, with a variation of 200 uh, nanometer. And this is, by large extent, uh, uh, determined by the viscosity of the high refractive index resin. And because we have a solvent-free process, um, it makes it possible, uh, or it makes it uh, difficult to uh, uh, reduce the, the residual layer thickness, which we are getting there with a standard resin 
which we have available, we already have a 150 uh, nanometer residual layer thickness uh, with a variation of uh, 35 nanometer as shown at the SID uh, last year. The upscaling uh, is complex. Uh, we have developed our own uh, in-house upscaling method and you uh, see that the seam quality of the upscaling is, is very important. Um, if the height of the seam is too high, then you will uh, see this in, the, uh, uh, in, in layer thickness variation next to the seam. And this is simply because the pressure there is, is lower. Um, however, if you can control the quality of the seam nicely, uh, below three micron, then there is no impact of the seam and you have a very nice, smooth, uniform imprint. The last uh, functional measurement is the, uh, the, uh, the, the functionality, uh, the, 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 the image quality of uh, the waveguide. And therefore, OptiFidelity used their own uh, setup uh, with a uh, projector, a uh, green projector and uh, uh, a wild uh, field camera. And this shows that the contrast is good, so it's sharp. Uh, the waveguide works nicely. And it also shows the robustness not only of the imprint uh, process, but also of the design uh, made by Lightrans as well as the mastering quality. So this shows that all the ingredients are there. The large area imprinting is uh, possible. And this brings me to the, to the tools, uh, the tools which we develop so we have the Portus 1100 platform, uh, as well as the 600, the, the, the smaller uh, broader. And uh, hereby you can imprint on different glass uh, substrates of 0.5 millimeter up to 10 millimeter. You can go thinner if you use a carrier. Uh, we can replicate on different materials. And for this setup, the manual is still handling. So this is for R&D and, and uh, small scale production. We also ha have our integrated uh, line, our Aurora uh, 1100 setup, and hereby all the imprint steps are integrated, starting from the primer, the coater, and the imprint module. And there's also possibility to add inspection stations. Tag times typically are around one to two minutes. So this brings me oh, no way. this brings me to the last slide. Together with the consortium, we made uh, large area uh, waveguides uh, on 300 by 300, even having multiple substrates in one imprint cycle. This work, waveguide works well already in the first uh, uh, test runs. Further material development is ongoing, uh, also process development. Uh, the tests have been done at Gen 3.5, but there is no uh, reason why it doesn't work at Gen 5. Gen 5 is uh, possible, and this shows that really high volume production is possible. We discussed the two tools, and uh, yeah, we also see, as, as shown, that really the, having the design, the mastering, the imprinting together uh, for optimization is, is needed. Um, yeah, we look forward to, to work to companies uh, on this topic. Thank you. Great. Great.